Thank you very much for inviting me to speak here. Uh, when I was preparing my presentation, I decided to Google how to give a good presentation. And um, one of the pieces of advice was not to present just before lunch. Um, so, but I suppose the positive is, is at least I'm not presenting after lunch, which we also call the graveyard shift. Um, um, so hopefully I uh, won't keep you from your lunch and I will keep on time. I'll try and keep on time. So just some declarations of interest regarding some of the studies that we've involved in and where we've received funding from. Uh, so I'm going to talk about Article 45 and CLP uh, legislation in Ireland. Um, this is not an industry's perspective. It is a National Poisons Information Centre and an appointed body perspective. So I'll describe who we are, what we do. Um, I'll talk about the current uh, product notification process. The journey that we have and are continuing to have towards being compliant with CLP regulation and the key resources that we feel have, have, are necessary, the challenges that we faced and the future uh, product notification process that will be in Ireland. I'm sure you're all aware of Article 45, the Member States shall appoint a body or bodies responsible for receiving information relevant for formulating preventative and curative measures in the event of an emergency health response from importers and downstream users placing mixtures on the market. In Ireland in 2010, the legislation they had an amendment which outlined who the authorities were for CLP regulation. They listed them as the authority, the Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries and Food in respect of pesticides, and Beaumont Hospital Board for the purpose only of Article 45 of the regulation. So you might ask, who are the authority? It's the Health and Safety Authority is the competent authority. They have representation at EU, ECA, the OECD and EU, and sorry, UN level. Um, they have very strong links with industry uh, because they're involved in health and safety in the workplace and they have a very strong enforcement role. So you might ask, where do the National Poisons Information come into the picture? We are based in Beaumont Hospital. We're not a legal entity and that's why Beaumont Hospital Board is mentioned on the legislation. Uh, we are part of a very large academic uh, teaching hospital. We serve 290,000 people. We're a designated cancer centre. We're a national referral for neurosurgery, renal plant, transplant and cochlear implantation. The um, Walmart Hospital employs 3,000 staff and of that eight uh, members of staff uh, work in the Poison Information Centre. And of the eight members, there is a 4.5 whole-time equivalent Poison Information Officer. There's one secretary, a part-time manager, and me, who I'm a, a part-time a clinical director. I'm also a consultant to anaesthetist a working in Beaumont Hospital. The reason we were set up in 1966 was to provide a, information to healthcare professionals to assist them in the management of acute poisoning. We take over 10,000 calls per year. We also opened a public poisons information line in 2011, and we, offer, we take calls from both healthcare professionals and members of the public from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. We are probably unique in that we do outsource our calls to the National Poisons Information Service in the UK at 10 o'clock at night. And we have very strong links with the poison centres in the UK. So how big of a problem is it? Uh, we're looking at our calls um, over the last number of years. They have been slowly increasing. And in 2018, we received over 2,000 and, uh, 2,700 calls concerning uh, household products. That doesn't include agricultural products, and it doesn't include industry. I didn't put up the industries one because there is a bit of an overlap um, and, and just because of the, the reliability of the data. But I would say about 1,000 to 1,005 calls we get regarding industrial products. As it, our calls have been gradually increasing year on year, because we had a Facebook, we launched a Facebook page in 2012. So therefore, looking at the percentage of household products as an overall a percentage, about 25% of our calls last year concerned household products. Um, I think part of this is because we do run Facebook, cam Facebook campaigns regarding increasing awareness, particularly of liquid detergent capsules and other household products a, for young <coughs> a, a, parents of young children. So the current notification process in Ireland, industry will either telephone us or email us their query to the Poison Centre, we will direct them to our website, we will ask them to download the project registration form and the agreement and indemnity form and return it to us and then we upload it into a document management system manually. This is a very labour intensive uh, process. 
um, and then we will invoice them because we charge them a fee. And the reason we charge them a fee is because they place their number on their product. And in case a member of the public um, has been poisoned or has accidentally ingested the product, they can, they can telephone us and our numbers on the product. This is our website, and as you can see, there is a, a, a section for industry where they can uh, link into. This is our product notification form. Uh, we ha have put a UFI in, in column on it, and that's really just to kind of increase awareness about the need for that once the regulation comes on, on board. Lar a lot of the large uh, bodies uh, or companies um, uh, already have that um, present. So this is our document management system. Um, we have 289 company folders and we have 39,000 projects on our document management system. It is a hospital-based system and we have a specific folder for the Poison Information Centre. It is password protected and we have a user administrator who allocates the passwords to the relevant staff in the information centre. It is very cumbersome, very labour intensive. We can do limited searches on a chemical, but we cannot, down, we cannot access how many products a company is submitting per year or how many is in the overall a database. Um, so it, it has to be manually counted. Sorry. So therefore, as you can see, our, I don't, I'm not sure about our data from 2016 because we've only really been focusing on of, of what notifications uh, to the Poison Centre since 2017. So we're between, I suppose, um, two and a half to 3,000 notifications uh, per year. So I'm glad to see Andres is, is uh, travelling in a spaceship. Uh, this is our mode of problem through the uh, Article 45. Um, he may give me a lift of the day in it. Um, in 2008, we had one whole time equivalent uh, working on the Chemicals Act. Today, we have five members of staff um, and it, we basically doubled our workload. We, where it all started off, where I first heard of it, was at the European Association of Poison Centre and Clinical Toxicologists, and we've had representation in, in the European Regulatory Poison Centre Activity Working Group in 2012. We've, all, we've also been involved at the European Commission meetings on the harmonisation of poison centres. We've been involved in webinars, workshops, and we're currently involved in the ECHO Poison Centre database, and two of, our colleague, two of my colleagues are going over to Helsinki in December eh, regarding that process. We participated in the study on harmonisation of information that was undertaken by Amec Foster Wheeler and the National Chemical Emergency Centre in the UK. Um, from my understanding, the major benefits are to larger companies that have multiple products in, in multiple member states. And uh, Ireland uh, has predominantly small and medium-sized enterprises. So I am aware of the struggles I suppose industry are having in, on, on um, placing products on, on the Irish market. Um, and we also were involved in the workability study, which was an undertaken by, the, uh, by Wood for the EC. So it was initial options that were voiced um, was that industry could um, individually um, submit the information to appointed bodies and that they could build or adapt their own A databases. And then there was an option of a centralised notification portal and ECHA has, has taken over that role. And as, as they've already said, there's a version one and my understanding is version two is now coming on stream. I suppose when we started the process, in information technology seemed to be one of our biggest uh, areas of concern. We are not able to accept the XML format. Our documents were coming in Excel, Word, and PDF. Um, and uh, so we went to our local IT department in 2012 regarding developing an in-house IT platform. We were very fortunate that we had poison centres that we could contact and ask them about uh, their systems, in particular Netherlands and Germany were very helpful. Um, however, Beaumont Hospital is a very busy place. This legislation was coming down, uh, regulation was coming on stream in 2020 and they were dealing with problems of large hospitals on a IT uh, level aim. Um, so therefore our, our probably our situation wasn't probably uh, prioritized. From that, talking to them, then we went to a national level where we submitted an IT proposal to our health service executive, um, and we're still awaiting a approval for that. And then at a European level, the Echo Poison Central notification portal um, got um, approval, and therefore this seems like a likely way for us to uh, go ahead. Forward, go forward. 
Um, so version one is, I suppose, where um, ECHA can dispatch the information to the appointed bodies. With version two, there will be an option of a searchable database, and this will be where our preference lies. Um, I suppose with their future additions, extra functions such as invoicing or language, whether that comes in streams, we, we would uh, find that beneficial. We applied for version one once it came on stream in April 2012. We weren't sure whether there was a requirement to, uh, for version two, but we felt there was a very tight line between October, November 2019 and January 2020. And our security system, we just wanted to make sure we were going in the right direction. Um, thankfully, it was a very short um, time frame to gain an access to version 1, so we do have access to version 1, but we're still unable to download the notifications. So I have no idea how many companies have actually, that are placing products on the Irish market have actually notified to the central database. But it did uh, give us an indication of what the ECHA security requirements were. Um, and we had to appoint a legal representative uh, who was the CEO of the hospital uh, to sign a declaration of commitment uh, on the security aspects. We appointed a user administrator who was our uh, uh, poisons manager. Um, and we went to the IT department regarding appointing a security officer uh, to the SON network. Um, and they suggested that the data protection officer was actually the best person to go to, uh, to be involved in that. And, and uh, she's attended meetings in Helsinki um, as a result. So security requirements, because we deal with health uh, data, I suppose many are in place due to that hospital environment. We do have automatic locking of our computer systems. We have accountability of who is using, accessing the system. We have risk of malware infection is mitigated. We have access from untrusted networks controlled. We don't have the two-factor user authentication system in place, but I have been told that a package has been coming from ECHA, which I assume will have that system uh, in it. So I am hopeful that that will be in place. So when we looked at the resources, um, as you can see, our workload has increased, has uh, doubled since we started this process, and therefore uh, we require more staff uh, to deal with our obligations. Our infrastructure is over 30 years old. We have six desks uh, for uh, seven members of staff, um, and so therefore there's one member of staff sharing a desk. Um, so not only with the human factors, our, our infrastructure will need to be looked at, and with that will come funding. Initially, sorry, funding. So initially, I submitted a, a business plan in May 2018, but then I revised it in December 2018 when we got clarification that the ECA port notification process was going to go ahead. A, when I asked the HSA how many hazardous projects are placed on the Irish market every year, they weren't able to give me that data. They had, they had no idea. When we didn't know how many notifications we would, uh, were going to receive once the, there was mandatory reporting. We gave a guesstimate of about threefold, and based on auditing 3% of those projects, we calculated that we'd need um, three whole time equivalents. Um, and this doesn't include the reports that will be necessary to submit to the European Commission or the where, you know, awareness activities amongst industry. We submitted for a poison information officer and a cervical or a cer um, clerical officer with the proviso that we'd have to re readjust once the regulation came on stream. We're still awaiting approval for that business plan. Um, therefore, then looking at an organisational and an educational perspective, we are part of a bigger uh, organisation um, and they have a very defined clinical structure. We have policies and procedures in place. We have um, data protection and, and confidentiality, of course, is, is very important given, I suppose, the fact that we deal with health data. We're looking at our security aspects and I suppose with new staff coming on stream and a new searchable database, we will need education and training uh, to, to deal with that. From a relational side of, side of things, we have, I suppose, pre-January 2021, we have information on our websites where we have linked in with the HSA to provide that, and that will need to be updated as we progress along the road. We hope to participate in workshops with industry in Ireland so that we can make them aware of their obligations. We will need a service level agreement if, if the HSA agreed to, to help us with the enforcement role, and then whether we need an SLA agreement with ECHA in, in accessing their searchable database, I, I suppose we, we need to um, get clarification on. 
post January 2021, we are concerned about our relationship with industry because now they are going to be submitting to a central notification process and therefore they have no necessary reason to be directly contacting us. Uh, so we hopefully we'll work on that. Auditing will be from a security side and for notification inside uh, will be important. And we already have a role in, to, as a poison centre in talks of surveillance. So I, I do feel we probably are up to, to date with that and, and uh, feel that we can cope with that, that role. We have had challenges, as I'm sure all of us, uh, in, in the, including in the industry, will have. Dare I say the word Brexit, but our calls are answered by our colleagues in the UK at night. Um, and therefore, if, some, if we get a phone call um, at nine o'clock at night, we can, uh, regarding a certain chemical, we can log on to the searchable database, get the information and answer the call. If that call comes at 11 o'clock at night and is answered by our UK colleagues, they don't have access to that portal system. We did have a, we occasionally have had an issue with jurisdiction um, with regard, we'll say, somebody placing a product on, in the Republic, on the market in the Republic of Ireland and not realising that they had to notifi notify us. Uh, they, they thought that once they notified the UK that, that we were covered by that. Uh, so there was issues, but I think with Brexit that probably has, uh, people are now aware um, of the um, jurisdiction. We are emerging from a recession and therefore have financial constraints. The Poison Centre comes under the remit of the Department of Health. The Chemicals Act is under the Department of Business, Enterprise and Innovation. And therefore, so there is a bit of a dis disconnect regarding our role eh, with regards to the appointed body eh, for the Chemicals Act. We have no prior ex experience for enforcement. Um, so that is why I suppose we are going to the HSA who have very strong enforce, enforcement role um, to, to help us out with that. We also charge a fee for using our number and there has been no increase since it was first introduced about 20 years ago. Um, and uh, I, I, I suppose we just have concerns that because it's the ECHA won't be charging for their system and that it, it's linked in with that, 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 will, that industry won't be aware of that. What are the advantages? Well, we are a poison centre and we're the appointed body. So once the information comes to us, that's it. It doesn't have to go anywhere else. Uh, we are on a hospital campus and therefore we have a strong IT department and a strong security um, <coughs> department that we can ask advice on. We have close ties. We're a small country. We have know our colleagues in the um, HSA. We, as a toxicology community, we're quite a, a small community as well and therefore we have links with other poison centres. Um, with, in comparison to other areas within the health is service in Ireland, we have a very low level of staff turnover, which our staff has been there for the last 20 years and are very experienced. We've had a previous role in toxicology, um, so we are, um, we are comfortable with that role. There was times along this process that we really did feel like uh, sticking our head in the sand and hoping it would all go away, but um, thankfully we have persisted. So I'm hoping that this will be where the future uh, notification process in Ireland will lie, that industry will notify to ECHA, that we will be able to log into that searchable database, um, and that we will audit uh, a certain percentage of those notifications, and if we find any anomaly, that we'll be able to link back in with industry, and that we'll also be able to invoice industry um, for, for them putting their, their, our number on their product. From a non if we come across any non-compliance, we hope we'll be able to have links in with the HSA that we can inform them and that they can link back in from an enforcement role. So therefore, in summary, we, I do think it is a, an achievable goal, given that there'll be a searchable database, that we, we should be able to get access to it. Um, and the IT department has kind of indicated that that will be the case. Our, we're hoping there will be additional functions as a, we will need a role for invoicing. Security requirements, uh, we'll be doing intern and auditing of our requirements for ECHA and I suspect ECHA will be doing external auditing. In enforcement, we're hoping to um, link in with the HSA and therefore we'll also want to be strengthening our relationship with the industry and hopefully the funding will come through. So it has been a long road, it's been an uphill struggle, but we're hoping that at the, uh, when we get to the top that the view will be well worth it. And um, so I'd just like to say uh, in thank you, or in Irish, go round Thank you. Thank you.
Many thanks for this very interesting uh, presentation to see what the situation is like outside of Germany and uh, how the authorities uh, are there, well, then uh, prepared for the new challenges. Are there any questions to Ms. Duggan? Sonja Fischer from if they uh, would have one question, would you be able to uh, get in a little bit more into detail as to uh, what the fees are concerned? The a fee based on the size of the company. Um, so it's about 650 euros per year for a large company and then about 250 for a smaller company. Um, so I, I think it is a minimal um, amount for the service that we, we do provide um, given that our number is on the, the project.